Well, good morning. My name is Tom. <laughs> Get yourself a cup of coffee. Back out at the cabin today. The cabin build. Today I'm going to be installing the chimney and also installing the ice and water shield. And while we was here, I got two tips, maybe three, maybe four, who knows. What we're going to start out with is the ice and water shield. Now I use what's called Grace ice and water shield. It comes in a roll. It has 225 square feet to a roll. It's probably the most expensive ice and water shield that you can buy. But that's not why I buy it. You can buy uh, Meccano grade which is half usually was half the price of ice and water shield but over the years I repaired a lot of roofs that other contractors had done by going with the Econo and some of them leak like a sieve so I made my mind up a long time ago that it, you know we aren't talking a million dollars it's maybe I don't know fifty sixty dollars a roll more for the grace versus uh, some of the Econo grades but when you're talking about a roof and you're talking about like this one, uh, I'm never going to touch this roof again once that ice and water shield is on there and then covered with the steel roofing. It's a done deal. So why say $50 or $60 and have, have the possibility of a leak? So that would probably be tip number one is about the ice and water shield and being grace. Now for those of you that don't know what ice and water shield is, it's a tar strip. It's uh, what 75 feet long and three feet wide. Very sticky on warm days so very difficult to install. Just takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of patience. Today is warmer than I like but today is, a, is the day that I've got to uh, install this stuff. So first will be the chimney. I'll put in one of those uh, metal bestest chimneys. And the same thing there, they don't really make a, uh, a watertight flange for steel roofing for these chimneys. So you're kind of left to your own accord to figure out uh, what will work best for you. What I do, and I'll, sh I'll bring you along and show you, it comes with a big thimble that goes right on top of the roof. On a regular asphalt roof, uh, it would be perfect. That's, that's exactly what it is made for. It's just not really made for steel roofing. But you, you got to come up with something. You know, if you're going to, outside of going out the wall and up, and I don't do that at all, I just don't think that's a good way to install these chimneys. As well as it costs more money. You know, you need that extra pot to get into the wall and another piece of pipe. Uh, all, just the, the cost just goes up and up and up when you go out through the wall rather than through the roof. I can keep the cost of the chimney down just a little bit. So what I do is I install the chimney, bolt it in, I swap out the screws that it comes with for a, a 3 inch lag screw, uh, a torque screw, uh, rather it comes with these little tiny things just, and they strip out too easy the whole 9 yards. So the bracket that actually screws to the building, I will drill those out bigger so they will accommodate this uh, uh, torque screw. And then that's what I install my chimney with. It, it, it Probably uh, six of them will, will do it. If you ever get one, it comes with a big L bracket. And you just got to drill out the holes a little bit bigger. So after that part is installed, then you install the thimble on top of that. And nail it right down with some roofing nails uh, so that it, it'll stay put. And then that's when I install my ice and water shield. Just like you would do for a... Uh, uh, asphalt roofing, uh, put your thimble on, put your ice and water shield on, and now the thing is watertight. Where the problem comes in is uh, trying to flash the steel roofing. You just, you just can't do it. So what I do is I come up with a bottom sheet and run past the thimble. You cut out for the metal thimble. You'll see once it's up on the roof. You cut out for the metal thimble and then you take a piece from the peak down and overlap it. So you get the first sheet 
and you overlap it and you're running by the chimney again. Now at this point, I have some 4 inch ice and water shield. Before I put this top sheet on, you got the bottom sheet that comes up from the bottom of the roof. This right here, before I put the top sheet on, I will lay another piece of ice and water shield over that. And that will keep the water from running underneath once it comes down the thimble. It'll keep the water from running underneath my steel roofing and out the bottom. It's not going to get into the cabin because of the ice and water shield. But I just don't want the water between my ice and water shield and the steel roofing. So I'll take some of that 4 inch ice and water shield that I used on the door and I'll lay a bead of that across, across that steel roofing. Then I'll bring in my top sheet and cover it all up. And then when it's all said and done, I will, I will put a bead of, of clear silicone all the way around where the steel roofing meets the thimble. I'll put a, a layer of, of silicone around that. And it's the 50 year stuff that stays flexible. You want the flexible uh, silicone because what happens with steel roofing, just like siding, it expands and contracts. It expands and contracts with the heat and the cool. So you kind of want a silicone and you need it anyways. There's a ring that goes around the chimney and, and where that ring butts up against the chimney you need to put a, a bead of silicone around that to keep the water from actually running down the chimney and, and bypassing the thimble. So you get that 50 year silicone and then put it around the ring and then put it around the steel roofing where the steel roofing comes up against the the uh, aluminum steel uh, the aluminum thimble uh, for the chimney so that's it for right now and I'm gonna bring I will bring the camera up on the roof a little bit so that you can uh, kind of get a grasp on how I'm installing this thing it will take it from there and have another cup of coffee it's a great day I change out the little screws that it comes with for these three inch lag screws. Then the next thing you want to do is make sure it's level. level the chimney will be nice and straight Now, this is the piece. We want this right here to the back. There's threads in here. You slip it down over the top. Very simple. Lock the threads into place. And then you got this ring. And this ring is what holds them all together. Now this stuff dents really easy. So you want to be careful of that.
And that's it. Chimneys together. Now I'm not going to put the cap on it until later. All I wanted today was to get the chimney on. And this right here is the thimble that I was talking about earlier. Slide this down. Just like that. And then I ice and water shield right over the top of it. There will be a cap that goes on here as well as a ring that goes around the chimney and that's what you put the silicone on.
Well, it's the end of the day. The ice and water shield's all installed. I put on, I put the chimney in, you saw that. Um, the ice and water shield. The, the best trick with that ice and water shield is just uh, take your time, be patient. Now, whatever you do, don't let the sticky touch the sticky. Uh, once it does that, it's all over. Uh, you will never pull it apart once the sticky uh, touches the sticky. What I did was I cut it into six and seven foot strips. That's the easiest way to deal with it so that it doesn't run off as you're rolling down the roof. I also kept the roll in the shade. Uh, that's another tip about that ice and water shield. Uh, try to keep it as cool as possible uh, the entire time. Do not let it set out in the sun and then uh, think you're going to work with it because it's just going to be the, the warmer it gets, the stickier it gets, the harder it is to deal with it. That's the difference between good quality ice and water shield, grace, and the cheaper stuff. Uh, what's the other? Like I said, just keep it in the shade, keep it cool. I cut off two pieces at a time. Uh, I'm here by myself, or I would have had somebody down on the ground passing it up and keeping the pieces in the shade. So I cut off two pieces at a time, small roof, went up, laid them out. I uh, had no problems at all. Uh, the whole thing went very smoothly. So the, the cabin is watertight. The, the, uh, the steel roof isn't on it yet, but she'll at least shed water. So now, at least when I'm out here, I've got a good place to go. Uh, when there is a rainstorm or a shower or, or something like that. Uh, we have just been getting, the last month and a half, we have just been getting pounded with rain. E uh, even last night, we had it rained most of the night. Uh, everything out here is just water everywhere. So, <laughs> the wells are full. It's looking good. It's quiet here. Man, it's just been a great day. Great, great day. I'm really looking forward to uh, getting moved into this place. Over the weekend, I brought home the stove. I brought home, well, last trip to the, to the log cabin, I brought home the gas stove. I brought home the gas lights. Uh, everything I need to get the place plumbed up with the gas. So uh, once the doors and windows are on, that stuff will come in. And also the wood stove. I got to do the floor in there before I can bring in the wood stove. So once the doors, I want, it's one door and the two windows are in, I can lay down my plywood floor. And then after that, I, I got to give it either a coat of stain or a couple of coats of polyurethane. I haven't really decided yet. It's kind of going to depend on what I've got on the shelf, probably. If I got a, a quart of that, then I'll probably uh, give it two coats of polyurethane and call it good. And then bring the stove in and get the wood stove installed. And at that point, it's not finished, but it's at least heatable. So that'll be nice and I can start cooking. Uh, I haven't been able to do much cooking in here because of just too hot with the campfire. So I haven't really dealt with the campfire too much during all this heat and humidity. But fall is coming, and we'll get the kitchen put in, and we'll get the wood stove installed. And then it'll be time to start having some, some outdoor meals here at the new cabin. Uh, excited, excited, excited to be at this point. Cannot wait for the wood stove to go in there, let me tell you. Because uh, just hearing the crackling fire and looking out over this uh, deer hunting country is going to be a uh, pretty... A pretty awesome thing to do, let me tell you. And have my coffee. So throw me a bone. Uh, subscribe to the channel. If you want to go check out my Patreon channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, go on, check it out. I've been working on it uh, pretty steady, pretty hard. Got some public videos in there for everybody. So I will see you next week.